Success stories and interviews with game changers and thought leaders who have overcome both in life and in business. Welcome to Vertical Momentum. Hey guys, check out the new episode, the new podcast. Appreciate you guys. Um, Just remember, if you guys want a podcast, there's no better way to do it than Anchor. Number one, it's free. Everybody loves free. Free, 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 free. And then you can also record and edit your podcast right here and not have to go anywhere else. And Anchor will also distribute your podcast to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. So guys, definitely, if you're looking to podcast, use Anchor. Love you guys. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Vertical Momentum, where we talk to today's leaders and game changers. Guys, this is going to be a fun episode, especially for me, because this gentleman is somebody that I truly respect and honor. And But guys, at first, I want to thank our sponsors, uh, Ra- uh, Racing for Heroes. They help veterans that are dealing with suicidal ideations and depression. So thank you for Racing for Heroes. Check them out. Uh, this guy that we're going to talk to, time is very precious. He's got a lot going on. But we've been in a Vetrepreneur tribe together for a while, and he's ser- still serving this amazing country. He's also a NASCAR driver, which I'm a big NASCAR guy. So, Jesse, welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, first thing I want to say um, before we even get started is thank you for being a brother in Christ. That's most, the most important thing. Most definitely, most definitely, always. Now, I've been following your career for a while because, like I said, I'm a big NASCAR guy. But when I heard you on my friend Mario's uh, show, you really touched my heart, especially about your story. So, I mean, I don't know where you want to start. I know you have very limited time. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your, the story about your mom and dad. I think that's what touched my heart the most and how, how much you love this country and how much you think that this, the opportunities are still available to everybody out there. Yeah, most definitely. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, you know, so for my story and my parents' story, you know, originally I'm from Dallas, Texas. Uh, both of my parents immigrated from Nigeria to the U.S. Uh, back in the early 80s. Um, and uh, during that time, you know, it was a little bit easier to get from country to country. And, you know, nowadays with all the different, you know, um, immigration laws and visas and all that stuff, it's a bit more tough. But it was a little simpler process back then. Still tough, but simpler. So my parents came from Nigeria to the U.S. back then. Um, you know, and my, my dad, when he was coming over, going to the United States of America, you're going to be going to a place where there's a lot more opportunity than Nigeria. You know, you have to understand you have our Iwuji name. When you go to the U.S., you, you got to succeed. Like, there's no other option. Like, this failure is not an option at all. You must succeed. Do not embarrass us. <laughs> That's literally what he told us. So my dad came over to the U.S. in the 80s, uh, decided to settle in Dallas, um, uh, got his education, went back to Nigeria, married my mom, brought her back here, um, had me and my two brothers and my sister, and we grew up in Dallas. And uh, for those listening who who know, you know, Texas is, you know, football is king. God in football, that's it. That's the only thing in Texas. <laughs> so um, I naturally gravitated towards football. And I, as I was growing up, I had a big now, goal you a and a big dream of mine to make it to college and play college football. And, you know, my family had, you know, played college football before, um, you know, both of my parents, they were still grinding hard to, to elevate our lives and put us in better positions in life so that we could succeed. Also, you know, both of my parents worked very hard. Uh, my mom was a nurse. She worked hundred plus hour weeks every single week and not just like here and there for some extra overtime money. I'm talking about every week of the year. 100 plus hour weeks as a nurse in the hospital, labor and delivery, delivering babies, seeing a lot of stuff, good and bad. And um, my dad, you know, worked at a lot of schools, doing a lot of media stuff with schools. Um, you know, he, 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 I would say he, he would be the guy working mainly in like AV departments and stuff like that. So um, they did that. They worked hard. They grinded. They had some small businesses on the side. Um, we're really just trying to do what they could to show us that hard work pays off. Eventually, you know, when I got to high school, um, you know, football was, you know, you know, a big part of my life. So I was playing football. I was trying to get better. I did everything I could to uh, put out more effort, put out more grind, 
um, and just put more focus into football than others were. There were people that were more talented than me, but I didn't let that stop me. I didn't let that talent be something that derailed me and made me feel like I couldn't make it to college over these guys. I was going to make it happen because I was going to basically outwork them. And that's what I did. Going into my senior year, I started getting recruited by some different uh, colleges. One of them was the Naval Academy. So I looked at that opportunity as a really good one to go to a good school, get a great education, play football for a great team. And then when I graduate, be able to serve as an officer in the United States Navy. So I took this opportunity, went to Naval Academy, played football there for four years, graduated in 2010, uh, became an officer in the Navy, uh, was on two different ships for my first four years in the Navy. Um, I, w I went on two different deployments between those ships um, during my sea time. And then when I transitioned from sea duty to shore duty in 2015, I went to Monterey, California, where I was serving on the staff there at, at Naval Postgraduate School. But in between all this sea time and shore duty and all that stuff, I started developing this crazy passion for cars and racing. And although I had never raced in my life, you know, I had been to track days prior to that with my personal cars. I had a Corvette, I had a Challenger. I would take them to drag strips. I would take them to road course tracks, you know, do little, little time trial events, just little stuff, but I never raced. Like I never raced wheel to wheel in actual sanctioned races. So I decided one day, I was like, you know what? I like cars. I like racing. Why not try to become a professional race car driver? Like what's stopping me? Like there's no law that says I can't become a, prof a professional race car driver. There's no rules in racing that say I can't do it. Like I'm gonna make this happen. I don't know really how, but I'm gonna make it happen. And through a lot of grind, through a lot of effort and a lot of faith, you know, praying every night to God saying, hey God, like please lead the way. When you start praying, you put in faith in him and you're, in, and you're also, um, you're complementing that faith by by having action towards this goal every day, like actual actionable steps every single day. You put that with faith. God starts putting things in your path. He starts putting people and doors, things that you can that, that you can use to continue to move forward, because because as you're moving through this path, it's going to be dark. It's not going to be easy. You know, God puts our vision in all of our minds that shows us that like whatever goal we have in life is attainable, that we can achieve it. That's why he puts it in our head so we can see it. But once we see it, for some reason, a lot of people stop believing in it. They start going through the journey and it gets hard and they stop believing that it's there. Why wouldn't we believe in it? Like literally God put the end vision in our head. He already put the end. He already showed us like, here it is. The deal is done. Like it is already done. Just keep going, have faith that I'm going to let you get there no matter what happens. And that's what I did. And through a lot of grind and effort, you know, I went from, you know, racing late model stock cars in 2015 to working my way up all the way now to the NASCAR truck series and the NASCAR Xfinity series. If your phone locks, sorry about that, my brother. Oh, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. I know you only have about 15 minutes, but so how tall are you? Uh, currently, I'm six foot. You know, I, I don't know if I'm growing anymore, but maybe if I can grow a little half an inch more, maybe I can, uh, maybe I can dunk. <laughs> how hard was it to fit into a, a NASCAR a truck? Yeah, no, for the trucks, it's not that bad. They actually is a lot of space in the trucks. Um, the Xfinity car is a little bit more tight. But it, it's fine. But um, yeah, I mean, a six foot person, it's not, it's nothing, that's nothing too tall for a, a race car, a NASCAR. Now, if I was like seven foot, now it'd be another story. It'd be very difficult. But, you know, at six foot, no, it's not, it's not difficult at all. Now, when you first got into the series, you know, they say sometimes never meet your hero. Uh, how were some of the drivers that you met? Were they really uh, cordial? Um, yeah, yeah, a decent amount of drivers, pretty cordial. Um, I mean, I, I haven't talked to every driver on the grid, but you know, I talked to, uh, you know, a, a few of them. And, and you know, ones I talk to, they're cool. Some of them, I, I don't know if they care to really talk to me. <laughs> maybe they're just always in game face mode when they get to a track, or maybe just because, you know, they're, you know, they live in North Carolina, I live in California. Maybe you just don't, I don't know, you don't have anything in common. <laughs> so then how, how did the Air Force, I mean, the military, Sign off. 
Yeah, for me, um, I didn't really have to sign off. I mean, I was doing it just on my own outside of the military, so I didn't need any real sign off. It wasn't taking me away from, you know, being, uh, um, you know, deploying in the in the military and doing all that stuff because I wasn't on the ships anymore when I started racing. I was off the ships by that point. So um, yeah, it wasn't uh, it wasn't really it wasn't really too bad of an issue. I just started racing and they supported me. You know, because. So now I want to thank you for being in the military. Um, now, I love your mom, the story about your mom having to carry water to her family as a child. Is she the one that instilled that heart of service in you? Um, the first service? No, it, it was something I just did myself. I, I think both, both of my parents respect the military a lot. They, um, you know, supported my decision to, to join when I went to the Naval Academy. So, um, yeah, it, I didn't. Nothing else inspired me to want to serve. You know, I think just the opportunity to go um, go to a place that was going to help me achieve my other dreams and goals. I think that's what inspired me. I think that's what the military does. It you know it allows you to open up your life and be able to be the most you can be. You know, um, just like it's funny because just like that army commercial, be all that you can be. You know, that's what the military allows you to do. It helps you go one serve the country. You two, you're 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 being a positive. Um, um, influence to society in, in in this country, and you're doing great things for this country. And then you know it also helps you after the military because we're not always going to stay in forever. You know, some of us will be in for a few years, some will be in for 10, 20, 30. But at the end of the day, at some point, we got to get out. So I think the military helps open up doors in that way. So what are your goals? You know? So my goal is to continue to build my business empire that I have right now. When I say empire, it's not like huge. It's just my small little empire. But build my my, my business portfolio that I have right now. I have real estate stuff going on, esports um, with e racing association. I have um, my drag racing events with the Redless Group. I have an app that I just got recently partnered up with, um, and some other stuff. So just try to build that business stuff. Also, you know, make it to the NASCAR Cup Series and race there full time. And then, and then eventually win races and eventually win a championship. And then um, also to, um, you know, continue to serve in the military. And, you know, I plan on getting out probably at my 20-year point. So you're in the reserves now? I am in the reserves, yes. So what is that like? I mean, it's going to be pretty amazing. You know, some one day you're wearing a military uniform, and then the next day you're in the NASCAR uniform. Yeah, yeah. So um, typically, that's what happens. I will be in my my NASCAR uniform racing on a Friday night, and then sometimes be in my Navy uniform Saturday, Sunday doing you know Navy drill. It happens. Um, it's just a time balance game where I'm just balancing time and learning how to manage my time wisely so I can make it all happen at once. So now you were quarterback. I played, in college, I played DB. So I played, um, I played free safety. Um, I, play, I played corner a little bit. I played nickel back. I played um, dime back. Um, you know, basically all the DB positions in college. So who was one of the people that you looked up to? Um, looked up to in college. Um, while I played, you know, any good DB out there. I, I, I like Sean Taylor a lot who played, you know, for Miami. Um, I like Brian Dawkins, his playing style. Um, I liked uh, Ed Reed. Uh, his playing style was great. Champ Bailey, um, Nathan Basher from Texas, who went to Chicago. Um, uh, all those great corners and safeties, you know, during, you know, between who played college football and, and, and the NFL during kind of, I would say, 2001 and 2010. All those folks, those were those are people I, I, I watched a lot. So were you a hard hitter? I hit pretty hard, I would say. <laughs> you know, because some of those guys you mentioned, especially the guys from the U, they were some pretty hard hitters back in the day. Yeah, um, there, there, there was. I, mean, I, 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 I've, I've taken some hard hits. I've given some hard hits. You know, I was only 180 something pounds, so I could only do so much. But yeah, football, football can be a rough game. Now, did you ever? I mean, being in the military, worry about concussions? <laughs> Um, I wasn't really too worried about concussions or anything like that. Um, that was a big thing. I wasn't a person who I didn't do a lot of helmet to helmet contact. I was a little bit smarter than that. <laughs> I mean, how about being in the military? 
in combat and stuff like that? Uh, for me, I was on the ships, so I was never really in combat. Um, I was on the ship, so I didn't really have to worry about many in injuries there. Even though being on a ship is still a dangerous environment, things can happen. Um, you know, you can fall overboard, you can run a ship aground, you can get hit by a mine. And a lot of different things can happen on a ship. So what was it like going to basic training, you know, and being around all different kinds of folk? Was that pretty interesting? Yeah, it, it was. It was. Um, uh, being around all the different people that we, we were, it helped me learn a lot of different culture, cultural differences between people. It helped me just learn people in general, which has helped me, you know, build relationships now. You know, understanding people, understanding where they come from, understanding what they're about. When you understand people, it helps you build relationships outside of your small circle. I love that. Now, um, tell us about your faith. Who was it that brought you into your faith? Um, yeah, so for me, um, what brought me into it is my parents. You know, they taught me the Catholic way, and I became Catholic because of my parents. And I learned, you know, that God can be a very big part of your life. And with God, you can do a lot of things. Um, and he protects you from the evils out there. There's a lot of evil in this world. And if you want to stay away from it, believe in God, you know, walk his light, walk his path and, you know, take on his light and life will be good. So how do you incorporate faith into, into your life? Um, for me, how I incorporate it is, uh, you know, one, I pray every single day. Two, I thank God for everything that he does for me every single day. Any, any, any wins that I have during the day, I always thank him. Anything that happens, anything that goes wrong, I blame myself, you know, and, and, and that's how I do it. Okay, so now I have a question now, because I know in the Navy you got to be really physically fit, but I'm sure to be in a NASCAR, all the sweating and all that, you have to be pretty physically fit. So, what is your days and your workouts like? For me, uh, my workouts, uh, I typically do sprints each day and I lift weights each day and I do a little boxing routine to stay in shape. Um, I, uh, I typically do all this stuff. Uh, about four or five days a week. And then I do my best to try to eat healthy. You know, I, I, not every single meal is super healthy, but I do my best. <laughs> so now do you have to really hydrate before you go into, into a race? Um, yeah, for hydration, um, you know, typically uh, if, I'm, if it's a race week for me, I will uh, drink a lot of water each day. Um, and then, um, you know, uh, try to sometimes even, I'll, I'll buy some coconuts and drink some coconut water, different things like that. So, um, yeah, I just try to hydrate, stay hydrated as much as I can uh, throughout the throughout the uh, week to kind of help me maintain all my electrolytes and, and water so that I don't cramp in a race car because that is something that can happen. Because there's no air conditioning in there. No AC, no AC. You're <laughs> just you're frying in there. <laughs> all right, last two questions because I know you got to go. Um how do we find you? How can we support your mission? Yeah, for me, um, anybody who's looking to support, uh, you know, you can find me on all the social media platforms. Just look up my name, Jesse Iwuji. That's J-E-S-S-E. -S -S -E. Last name is I-W-U-J-I. Um, and you can look me up on all the social media platforms from Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm on all of them. Search me, follow me, like everything I do, share it all that stuff. Um, if you can't remember how to spell the name, go on Google, type in Navy NASCAR driver. I uh, should be the only one that pops up for a few pages. All right. So now last question is when we first started talking, you were talking about how this country is so great and have so many opportunities. If there's somebody out there that's listening that don't think that this country is so great and has many opportunities, how can they start living their best life? Um, how they can start living their best life is just, you know, you know, they got to understand that they got to stop playing um, the victim card. You know, that that's what happens. I think a lot of people, when they say that this country doesn't provide opportunity or this and that, you know, a lot of times they're being a victim of themselves. You know, no, nobody, at the end of the day, we are all in control of our lives. We can go as far as we want to go. You know, any dream that you ever had, whatever you saw yourself becoming, you can achieve that. But it's not going to be Everyone's road is different. Just because one person has a little bit easier um, path to maybe their success doesn't mean your path has to be that easy too. Life is a card game. 
in a card game, there are no rules that state that if you are dealt a certain hand that you automatically are not allowed to win. In the card game, we are all dealt a certain hand. Some people's hand that they're dealt is a little bit better than some that are dealt. But because you're stopping you from winning, you can still win. It's just going to be a little bit harder. Maybe it's a lot harder, but that's just how it is. We're all dealt a certain amount of cards and certain type of cards and go forward from there. No matter where you got to start, you got to start from somewhere, whether it's really low or maybe you start really high. Some people are born into wealthy families. Some people are born into dirt poor families. Some people are born into middle class families. We weren't, we, were, we weren't allowed to pick where we started, but where you start doesn't have to be where you end. We can all still get to the top. The opportunity is there. You just got to be smart, have strong faith, um, you know, do your best to have a strong family. You know, I know different families out there go through different issues. Some are broken, some are good, um, you know, but just because it's broken doesn't mean that um, you don't, you're not allowed to succeed. You can still succeed. It's just going to be a little bit tougher. You know, you're, you're, maybe you're not going to have the home support. Maybe your friends aren't going to support you. Maybe your family's not going to support you, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, like as long as you have faith and you have actionable steps towards your goal on a daily basis and you're dedicated to trying to figure out creative ways to get there and you just keep fighting every single day, no matter what, you just refuse to give up. You will get to wherever you want to go. Life will reward those who stay strong enough, long enough. I love that. So which cars are you driving and how can, which, when, when and where can you see you? So the next race I'm racing will be in the NASCAR Truck Series on May 1st on Fox Sports 1 at Kansas Motor Speedway or Kansas Speedway. I'm going to make sure that I follow you. Thank you so much for coming on. I know it's been crazy, but I'm so blessed to call you a friend and a brother in Christ. Thank you so much, sir. And God bless you and God bless your family. You too. You too. Thank you for joining us today. Please hit subscribe and share. Please feel free to leave us a comment.